Hi all and welcome to a quick lab time. Um, I was asked recently, uh, one of the comments on one of the videos for the host information profile video was how do we, uh, how do we look for a cert? How do we create a rule based on um, whether a cert exists on the machine or not? Um, so certificates are used widely as a way of a way of making sure that a machine should be on the in, uh, on the network and should be able to access things, um, sort of ensuring it's a genuine machine based on the fact you can push it out from AD, you can push it out from the uh, the Global Protect client and the portal as well. So as this is uh, sort of lab time, so it's going to be quick, we'll just go through and because I didn't really want to, I didn't want to try and explain it in the comment because I'd, any explanation I'd have given in words would have probably just made no sense at all. So effectively in order to do this we need a we need a certificate and so to demonstrate this we're going to show there's so there's a certificate here i've created the certificate for it which is going to be our mode 44 gp client so the reason we're using that one is because i was using it for a, another lab um which was just authentication to to the portal okay you're going to need a certificate profile um, and that certificate profile has to have the uh, the root, the CA root in it, and that has to be what's uh, signed by. And then we need the portal, and the portal is going to use an authentication. It's going to use certificate profile GP client cert. So certificates that are presented by the client or found by the client are going to be evaluated against this certificate profile. Okay. Just to quickly show you on the endpoint as well. So on the endpoint, if we do run MMC, you can see it's already open. Go to that, so now we're gonna open our cert store, local computer certs, and we have the GP Windows app certificate in the personal certificate store for the local machine. Okay, going back to the firewall, we've got our hip check objects as we showed previously, so that's under objects. And then our hip profile that we're going to use is going to be um, the wonderfully named uh, Mode 44 hip profile general. And we can see we're matching on a single um, hip object at the minute, which is certificate check. Within hip objects, We've got our certificate check. There's two trains of thought on this. The one is that you can, within a HIP object, you can specify multiple um, multiple checks within that object. Um, I've heard many ways of people saying, okay, yeah, that works, and other people saying it doesn't work so well. Um, in my experience, uh, the best thing to do would be to create a, sing a single HIP object, say for certificate, and then if you had one for disk encryption, for instance, you create a single HIP object for disk encryption, then wrap that up in the HIP profile, and that seems to work a lot better. So this is our configuration certificate check. We're going to say, okay, so our certificate, we're going to validate it against a GP client cert, and we can add certificate fields to it if we need to. What we'll notice is that if I go back to the desktop and I just refresh the connection, okay, so refreshing connection sends um, Global Protect back off to the portal, pulls down back the configurations, and the initial hip check stuff um, goes ahead there. When it and then we can see it says I'm compliant. So where's that message come from? That message has come from the fact that we have a compliance check. So the gateway does the compliance check. Go on to there, and then we've got agent, and then we've got hip notifications. So under hip notifications, we can basically say what host information uh, profile we're going to be using. Are we just going to use a single object, or are we going to use a profile? In this case, we're using the hip profile to say that okay, yeah, this is we need to be a, a compliant machine. And then we have a match message for if you are compliant, if it doesn't match, this is hit profiles are all based on match and not match. And then if you don't match, you'll get a message saying you are not compliant because as usual, I have no imagination. So, and that's either gonna be a pop-up message or a system tray balloon. Okay, and then you can you can select that as you go. And you can, you can alter this um, 
and sort of customize it to what you need to, add a link to it. So if you're not compliant, you can go and you can sort of uh, have a link to ServiceNow or something like that where you could raise a ticket and say, I've got a problem. Okay, so that's the HIP notifications and that's gonna be when the, the, um, when the client then connects to the gateway, which in this case is the internal gateway, it will register its HIP, um, its HIP profile with that. And what that's looking for is that is looking for this, go to uh, settings, and then we're going to go to host information profile, which is here, because I've already pre-selected it. And then we've got the certificate there. And you can see everything in here. So if you come into the, the client and go into host information profile, you can see that you have all the, the so the OS. So if you had a, if you wanted to match on that Windows 10 Pro, then you would. If we created um, a, an OS that meant it had to be a Mac, this would then not be compliant. So we'll quickly do that. I'll stop waffling. Okay, so that's great. We know I've got a certificate on the machine, and we know that it is. We know that it's compliant. We know that we're going to be okay. So my policies now, if I have a look at my policies, so when I create it, there's one here, so we've got a ping test here. So let's just say, if I start off a ping here, okay, so we can ping 8888, that's all good. And that is because of this rule here. So if we look at the, this rule here, we've got ping test, so it's LAN to um, internet but the device column is now populated with a hit profile general. So that is where you're gonna pull the compliance aspect of this from. So the device is gonna match these, um, these criteria. And then we're gonna go for uh, ping being allowed. Okay, so the best way to demonstrate this is, so I'll now make a change. So we'll make a change quickly now to the hit profile. So I'm gonna create another hip object here and I'll do exactly what I said previously. So this is OS check. Um, and then we're gonna go for the host info. Uh, we're not gonna worry about any of that and we're gonna say that this needs to be um, an Apple device. And go with all, okay. And then our hit profile Remember, this is the hit profile. This is now what we're going to be um, evaluating against because that's what our compliance tells us. So we're going to go now with OS check and we're going to add that in there. So what needs to match now for this to be compliant is our certificate check. So our certificate has to exist on the box and our OS check. Okay, and I'm going to commit that. Okay, so that's now committed, 99%. It should be actually being enforced on the gateway, so configuration committed successfully. And assuming everything is well, if we now go back to our desktop, we should see the pings have now stopped. So the pings have now stopped. The reason the pings have now stopped is because we're no longer compliant. So, cancel out of that, if we can. There you go. And so we'll go back to here. And just to show this, so we'll do now a refresh the connection again. And any minute now, we should get a balloon just to pop up and tell us that we're now no longer compliant. Yep, you are no, you are not compliant. And the reason we're not compliant is because we haven't got Mac OS. Just really quickly, because I've got a minute left, I'll just go back. So if we now change that hip profile there, so we change the hip object. Just check. And then we're going to say contains Microsoft all. All. Okay, so this is any Microsoft. We're going to commit again. Okay, so it's now committed. This video is going to run just slightly over 10 minutes, I think. But now we're at 99%. If we go back to our host, we should be able to now ping 8.8.8 .8 .8 again because we are now compliant. 
So we can just have a quick look at the monitor tab as well, just really quickly. So we've got a hip match here. So when we can see we've got the hip match, we can also see we see the source user, which is me, which it's picking up from um, the Global Protect client. This also means as well that now we could actually we could rate, uh, sorry, we could create security policies based on source user as well. And if that source user just happens to be in a in a group, even though this is only configured locally on the firewall, you can create them for that user group. So you can say this user group can get to to wherever or cannot get to wherever. And we can see as well that the different things that it's, it's matching on. So this is the hip match. So we can see that we've matched on the profile, but it also gives us the objects as well that we've matched on. It gives us the machine name. So we can start to look at what machine names are doing and the operating system that's, that's in there. Um, and those are, those are the logs, those are the ones. And it will show just the hip match as well. So if it's not matching on something. Okay. So that's, that's it really. That's how you use a certificate. You would use a certificate mainly because certificates are the easiest ones to actually say, this is a, this is a machine that should be on our network or this is part of our domain or whatever. Um, because I mean, it, at this day and age, it used to be just Windows machines and you could say, okay, if you're coming onto the, the network with a Linux machine, then you're not going to be, you're not part of our organization. But everything these days is Apple, Linux, Android, iOS. It, it, there's that many different things now. But it does allow you to create a very granular policy and it also ensure very much that you have got um, just the machines that should be on your network, on your network. Okay, so I hope that, that helped. Um, and just leave a comment and like and subscribe if you liked it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be back later.